Hello, this is Julia Bushkova, and today's topic is artificial harmonics. So we're delving in the depths of artificial harmonics, uh, single notes so far, and uh, today Polly is back. My student will be helping, assisting us to understand this thing better. So artificial harmonics are the ones where the a bottom note is not played by the open string like it was in the natural harmonics but by a finger that stops the string that's how we call it in english sometimes i'm being asked why you do say double stop uh, well we have single stop which is when you press one note down that is a stop okay so if i press one note with a finger and then i touch very lightly with let's say fourth finger most common artificial harmonic of the fourth then i will get that whistly uh, flageolet fluty sound okay so again we, if it were natural harmonic i would have the a in the bass and i will touch in the interval of a fourth and i will get that inter uh, that sound now i have b and we have the b two octaves over uh, the same thing we can do on d string a fourth over, E sounds two octaves higher. Now we can do the following, right? Can't we, Polly? We can actually go to the fifth here. And the distance here is bigger between one and four. It's a fifth. It's again the same as it was in our natural harmonics when we played D open, let's say, and just a A. But we didn't press the A, so that's the same idea. We will do the B, uh, the E in the bass, and the B here. So, in fact, you can be playing scales, uh, and I jumped a little bit ahead of myself. So, we usually play the art uh, harmonic, artificial harmonic scales, using uh, fourths, interval of a fourth, right? So, those will be the most common once and uh, if we start a scale let's say hmm, if you start a scale from the a, a note of a here you will have to use the artificial harmonic already correct because we don't have an a in the bottom that low we could start g with a har natural harmonic but if we start with an a we have to use one four could you show a, a bit of the a major scale not very fast at all Yes, okay, so here, by the way, that's kind of nice to, to stop there, because here, if Polly goes down, then actually she'll be playing natural harmonic, but she also could do it here, and let's say return back. We don't need to play the whole scale anyway. Exactly, exactly, very nice. So again, you see, Polly is using uh, four slurs, uh, four notes on the slur, rather. Uh, you, you can also use uh, uh, separate bows. Most likely for a beginner or closer to the beginner, it will be easier to play separate bows. But once you're better, then you, of course you can do them on slurs. Um, okay. So what else we can do with um, artificial harmonics, or rather what other things you would need to do in order to play them well? For many people, again, especially more at the beginning, it's hard to find exactly where to put that fourth finger. Remember that fourth finger has to be straight. Don't try to put it in, an, in a good shape like we want it for a note. Uh, I call it supported shape. No supported shape here. So the reason we want to use that flat um, and straight uh, fourth finger with a flat tip on the string are uh, basically two bigger reason, biggest reasons. Uh, one is that even if you are not exactly precisely there, you're still probably going to get that harmonic. I mean, if I really go over here, yes, I'll miss it. But the point is, it, this area gives you a lot of leeway room for error okay and number two is that it's just not very easy to press it down if you press it down you will feel it more likely and of course the resulting sound will not be a harmonic artificial harmonic but will be some kind of dirty sound and you don't want it so helps okay 
practice uh, practicing those well first of all you do go to the interval of the fourth so if you don't if you don't know where your a is from e it's a good idea to actually just practice your fourth and then when you are on it straighten it out so here you are and then rather than doing this i will just make it lighter and we'll keep everything the same uh, a, not a lot of room for error right if you maybe try paul and see if what is easier yeah well of course polly's hand naturally goes to the correct version while polly here started violin very early she most likely will not be able to remember how exactly you started with artificial harmonics what her teacher told her to do uh, but we know that of course it's very important first uh, to know where your first finger goes every artificial harmonic depends a lot on the position of the first finger we very rarely have artificial harmonic on a, a second finger and forget about the third so first it is and so it needs to know its way so so if i know how my first finger goes then i would and then i will know my fourth okay so then i have a very good chance my harmonics will sound correct so i could put this then i straighten so the first is on the bass Another thing that is very helpful are octaves. Can you show us some octaves? Maybe again, just E. Yeah, just your E step. Or together. And so forth. Yeah, this one will be already natural harmonic, so we won't worry about that too much. But in here, that's very good. And now what we do after that, we just move that finger here and it becomes the artificial harmonic right so that might be useful exactly and then correct and so on and so on uh, very good idea to just practice the one octave uh, one uh, finger scales like the first finger scales, they don't have to go all the way up on one string. They can just be simple scales going in first, you know, four positions, basically it becomes. Okay, can you show maybe, yeah, A is fine. And so forth. And then you can return back or go up one more octave. And again, that tr trains your first finger. Uh, where it is and then to that you would be using your fourth so all very good um, placing of the bow again as I said before it will be easier if you're playing each uh, note separately uh, using lower part of the bow not here but lower part of the bow but never pressing with the bow too much however not also playing very lightly either so what your bow is doing is actually really helpful certain speed is necessary too much speed will be bad too little speed will be bad oh violin is a hard instrument to play isn't it uh, do you maybe want to show us uh, some a little example of the mixture of harmonics we have natural now and artificial harmonics the sarasata will be good Very nice. So that is from Introduction and Tarantella by Sarasate. And what you probably noticed also that Polly vibrated some of those notes. And it is possible to vibrate those that are artificial harmonics. And it's not possible really to vibrate that we can vibrate. But if I'm playing, well, I suppose that one kind of a kind of drunken sound though. That's not a very good sound. But if you, especially if you have like the, our main uh, natural harmonics, there will be really no vibrato there. 
So most of the time we don't vibrate uh, the harmonics unless they are all long notes and they are artificial, just like Polly demonstrated so far. Okay, so I do think that it pretty much covers the artificial harmonics. Now, as in this example, we used already artificial and natural harmonics. Okay, and in the following example, I will show uh, some of the scales and arpeggios using combination of both. the same way back. This is all for today. Thank you, Polly. Thank you. And uh, I will see you all later.